Welcome to the Disney Scrapbook, where together we take a journey to explore Disney history from 50 years ago. My name is Nolan. Today, I thought we'd take a look at Disney's 1972 adaptation of Marguerite Henry's 1946 Newbery Honored classic children's novel. Justin Morgan Had a Horse, a film based on a true story that was created as a two-part television show for the wonderful world of Disney, which initially aired on Sunday, February 6th and 13th, 1972, on NBC, soon to be re-released in August of that year. Adapted from a true story, this film, set in Vermont in 1789, retells how Justin Morgan acquires a little Bay Colt figure who was to go on to become the foundation sire of the Morgan breed. Calvin Clements Jr. and Walt Peterson began working on the story in 1965, but upon Walt's death, work was halted on this project. However, it was restarted six years later when the studio discovered that its option on the story was about to expire. Justin Morgan Had a Horse was to prove to be one of only a handful of television films that John Hollingsworth Morse directed. He was better known as an experienced director of the television series Lassie, Zorro, and McHale's Navy. Donald Patrick Murray, who was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in 1956 for his role against Marilyn Monroe in Bustock, was the classic Western film actor chosen to play the affable yet driven schoolmaster, Justin Morgan. He creates a believable character that is dedicated to his horse and dream of creating the perfect versatile horse for the diverse weather and mountainous conditions of Vermont. Sister of famous actress Natalie Wood, Lana Wood was cast as Kathleen, an indentured servant to the squire who was Justin Morgan's love interest in the film. Although she is convincing, in her role of a kind yet determined maiden of the era. She is an interesting choice of actress for Disney to use. As in April of 1971, she appeared in Playboy magazine, having posed the year before. This did, however, get her noticed by Cubby Broccoli, who cast her in the James Bond film Diamonds of Forever against Sean Connery. Justin Morgan's best friend, Bob Evans, was played by Gary Crosby, eldest son of Bing Crosby, who, as a teenager, had recorded two songs as duets with his father, Sam's Song and Play a Simple Melody, which became the first double-sided golden record in history. It is a shame that in this role he does not sing, but he is well cast as a stocky, fair-haired, yet persuasive gambler that likes to boast about Figure's powers. The money-driven Squire Fisk is convincingly played by the Western character actor R. G. Armstrong, while the prolific Whitner Nutting Bissell who appeared in over 200 movies and countless TV series, played the reporter, Mr. Mays, and provided the narration within the film. The stunt work for the film was performed by two stunt artists, George Olsen, who started out as a rodeo rider, but was best known for his work as the stunt double for Clint Eastwood. Additionally, he performed stunt work in the Disney film, The Wild Country, which I have previously reviewed. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Dick 
Warlock, who was Kurt Russell's stunt double for 25 years and performed in numerous Disney films, including Million Dollar Duck and Barefoot Executive, both of which I have previously reviewed, and I will also leave a link to those in the description below. Most recently, he performed stunts in Spider-Man. Although the film was set in Randolph, Vermont, it was obviously filmed at Disney's Golden Oak Ranch in California with accompanying match shots, as it would never be possible to get any kind of light seen in the film in Vermont itself. As the trees and mountain ranges create shadows and low light areas in panoramic shots. Meanwhile, the unobtrusive yet appropriate score for this film is written by the American composer and arranger Franklin Marks, who worked extensively as an orchestrator at the Walt Disney Studios for over 20 years. Figure the stylish Bay Morgan horse is believed to have been played by Red Cloud and Heritage Ethan, a Lippet Morgan stallion. Justin Morgan Had a Horse is a film that attempts to portray the roots of one of America's earliest breeds of horses, the Morgans. Morgan horses are intelligent and gentle-natured with exceptional Confirmation and strength. They have muscular bodies with straight and sturdy legs, are easily recognizable with their grace and carriage. Most Morgans are bay, black, or chestnut. Due to their superb temperament, athletic ability, and versatility, they can compete in a broad spectrum of equine events. Being between 14.1 and 15.2 hands, they make excellent horses for beginners, and their long, steady, comfortable gait makes them perfect for therapeutic riding. By comparing Marguerite Henry's book and Disney's film, there were some noticeable differences, principally the child Joel in the book who becomes an indentured servant to the miller, gentles the horse. But in the film, his character is replaced by Kathleen, an indentured servant to the squire and Morgan's love interest, which certainly creates a different subplot. And Justin Morgan gentles the horse himself. In the book, Justin Morgan is not consumed with the acquisition of money or fame as he is in the film. In the book, the horse is called Little Bun, but in the film, he is named Figure. Only chapters 5 through 13 in the book are used as a basis to create the screenplay. I believe that this is due to the Disney formula of leaving its audiences with an uplifting word of hope that good will always prevail was leaving plenty of material in the book that in the future could be used to create a sequel. In reality, Justin Morgan was born in 1747 in Springfield, Massachusetts. He was a composer of choral music and a teacher of singing and writing, who moved to the independent Republic of Vermont, his wife and children around 1788, to escape Massachusetts, Texas. He received the two-year-old cult figure as partial payment of taxes owed to him in Massachusetts and walked the cult to Randolph, Vermont in 1792. Figure soon became a legend for his ability to outwork, outrun, outtrot, and outwalk any other horse in the area. As his fame grew over the next 30 years, Figure would sire many offspring, and thus the Morgan breed was established. For a two-part television film, Justin Morgan had a horse is very well made, with a believable storyline that is particularly captivating for children. 
The actors are convincing and well cast in their roles, and the photographic work of the horses is stunning. Unfortunately, the scenery does not convince me that this film was set in Vermont, but I do not consider this vital for the message of the story. It is just a piece of historical fact that is not convincing. The version of the film on DVD and Disney Plus is slightly edited and appears to be the educational version omitting references to alcohol, which makes the scene of racing to the tavern after the lock pool a little disconnected. Also, at the beginning of the original release was an educational segment explaining the history and current use of the Morgan breed which would have been interesting to view, but is present on the VHS release. I particularly enjoy this film. It connects with me, as I myself ride a Morgan horse in Vermont. Thanks everybody for watching this video. If you would like to watch the film Justin Morgan Had a Horse, it is available on iTunes, Amazon Prime, Google Play, Disney Plus, and of course, DVD. If you like this type of 50th anniversary content, please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. I will be producing more 50th anniversary content throughout the year that will include Disney film reviews, LPs, and pop content. Thanks everybody for watching. TTFN, ta-da for now.